you have to come in under one of the uh, e visas. If you're marketing by web, you might not even have to come here except as a visitor. You might be able to set up a different type of entity, an LLC. You might even never end up paying U.S. tax on U.S. income if you structure it right. Things that think about before you get here. Do you want to get a green card? That definitely depends on your. This has a, an effect because if you come here as uh, E2, you cannot get a green card. But you can stay here for as long as you have your business. If you come here under an L visa, <coughs> that lets you come back and forth as often as you please, very few problems at the border, and you're eligible to get a green card. If you don't get a green card, in theory, after seven years, you have to go home for a year. You can't stay. So these are that's why I bring up all these different things. If you're a startup, again, you're probably looking at getting an e-visa because you want to get outside investment. And as long as you control slightly over half the business, that's no problem. If you're a small medium enterprise, you're not really looking towards getting outside investment, but you want to be able to come here freely. But again, you're looking at probably an L-visa as a manager. If you have accumulated capital available, well, if you don't, you're going to have a hard time coming to America. Okay, let's look at Patty Inc. While still in Ireland, now there's a reason that we have a cost here. Because if you total those up, you're talking about 3,000, 4,000 euros, 5,000 if you want to be pessimistic. If you come up, you set your goals, you want to <coughs> start coming up with an idea. Not a, necessarily a plan, but an idea of here's what you want to do, this is why you're going there. And you start testing it out with some. The web makes this so much easier. You don't have to be here to do any of this stuff. You set up a, a, uh, a landing page. You use Google AdWords, see if anybody responds. If nobody's responding, drop the idea because it's not going to get easier. So again, you can do this for just a few hundred dollars, euros, whichever. Get a positive response. Now you want to test it further, but you want to test it on the ground because you know maybe this doesn't scale very well. And then you take this feedback that you've been getting, contact your friends and all these different, as Greg was saying, the different Irish networks here in New York are very supportive. There's a lot of other business organizations you can rely on. Enterprise Ireland is, can be very helpful. Revise your goals, prepare your business brief, not a plan yet, but just an idea of what you're going to accomplish. Now you get to stage two. This is where you start the serious planning. Our recommendation is talk to the tax accountants first. Because U.S. tax is incredibly complicated. U.S. international tax is a whole exponential level more complicated. Straight at it out first, because if you make mistakes there, it's real expensive to fix, if you can. So we recommend that <coughs> they speak to some of the people that, that we know before they get too committed and figure out the right direction. And also, uh, one thing that's very misleading, you can come here and buy a book about starting a business. I wouldn't recommend that because it's completely different orientation. Quite often the, the instructions could be backwards for what's a better way to go. Then, step two, set up your company because you want to throw as many expenses into that company as you can, even if you can't work for it yet. Because if you don't have a, an L or an E or one of the other visas that lets you work, if you're under visa program, you have to book everything from outside the country. Otherwise you're well, illegally working. Then you, in the meantime, now once you're incorporated, you get your federal tax number, open your bank account. Now you can start setting up your structure. So again, even at this part, you can still back out and you're out maybe 10,000 euros. It's not nice to walk away from that kind of money, but if it turns out your plan is not working out, your co-founders or you know the other people that are important aren't quite what you thought it was, chances are you can walk away and. It's not that big a deal. Stage three, now you're ready to go. This is when you're definitely here. You're working with Greg, you're working with the other business networks, and you just, you tell people what you do, why they should use you, find out from them. Is this really what, does this really catch on or not? If it does, now you prepare the formal business plan because, well, for Patty, they would be going for an L1 visa, and you need one and you need to have a very workable, viable plan. But if you've taken all the other steps first, your plan should go through. Now you've given them a reason for them to give you the visas. Your business looks quite viable. 
once you've once you're sure you've got an ISPAR, then you can go through the, the far more expensive things of getting an office, hiring staff, and promoting yourself and adding value. One of the trick, one of the uh, traps of the LVs in is that the first year you have to prove you've added value to your company as a manager, or else they can refuse you on the second time. The first year is kind of a probation. So what you want to do is make sure that you've added value. Your renewal should go through, and then after that, they renew you for two years, another couple of times. So, if they've taken all these steps, that E should be in, in pretty good shape. They should know they spent money, they spent time instead of money up front to have a viable idea, they followed a certain procedure. Everything else should fall right into place as, as, as best as anything possibly can. And then, uh, as President Higgins was saying the other day, he wants Irish to learn here and <coughs> bring their skills and their learning. This is one of the ways to do so, especially since the L1 category lets managers go in and go out freely. There's other, there's other restrictions on different types of visas and how often you come over, uh, what an, an intent you seem to have. The L1, it doesn't apply because they assume it's a multinational situation and of course you have to travel and come back. So, Satish, he's an entrepreneur. His company has not been around for long enough to even vaguely qualify for an L visa. So, if he wants to come here, his best choice is likely to be an E2. Because as an investor, the minimum is relatively low compared to other categories. I've heard as low as 25, but 50 I think is more. 1,000 US dollars is more realistic. Now, as an entrepreneur, if he's thinking about getting outside in professional investment, from, especially from venture capitalists, that's where you should be spending a little time in advance to learn how the U.S. legal system works, because it's confusing to many Americans. It's totally baffling to a lot of our non-U.S. friends that how the whole thing would, why would you do in Delaware, or what's this about, can I do business in other states? That would take a lot more than the 10 minutes that I have here. If you want to get professional investment, the, the short version of it is you want to go to Delaware and then register in each state that you'll actually do business. If Satish is coming here to New York because he's involved in the fashion industry, then he would set up in Delaware and then register his business to, to do business, register his company to do business here in New York. Once you've registered, got everything done, much like Patty Inc., you would then get your tax number, which opens things up to let you get your bank account, get an office. And once again, as long as he's tested his idea and made sure it's viable in the earlier steps, now he can go for an E2 and prepare the formal business plan. And again, once he's tested all these ideas and has an idea of this is where we are, this is where we're going to go, he'll have a far more realistic business plan. And again, with anything involving immigration authorities, you got to document everything when it comes to the tax people. Make sure you document everything. And one of the key things here with tax is the same thing that goes for the uh, professional investment. You want a corporation. It's very complicated to set up a, an LLC and make it work. So now Satish got all his paperwork done. Now he's doing pitch events. That's something that's in the domain entrepreneurial centers of, of the US. You see it a lot in New York, you see it a lot in Boston, you see it a lot in Silicon Valley, now in places like Austin, where you can go, there's events pretty much, I would say, definitely weekly, sometimes every night. You can go to a different organization. One of the things I left off in my own, I, I had the Columbia Business School Alumni Clubs, VC and Entrepreneurship Committee. We run events and uh, we cooperate with other groups. It's, it's pretty much almost nightly. Some group is offering a chance to go out, pitch your idea to different investors. There's all different levels of investors here in, the, in, in New York or Boston or Silicon Valley. So if, assuming that he's a seed stage person, get out there and pitch your idea. Because one thing you'll get <coughs> is a lot of feedback on what will make it work. There's also some wise advice I heard that if you're looking to raise money, ask for advice. 
If you're looking for advice, try to raise money. You always end up with the opposite. <laughs> so, in conclusion, which is usually everybody's favorite part, you know, there's more than one way to come to the United States. A lot depends on where you're coming from and what you're trying to accomplish. But one thing you're guaranteed of, it's very complicated. Hence, try to learn as much as you can before you get here. Because it's really tough to learn why you're doing all this stuff. And well, everything's written in pen, not in pencil, so you can't really erase it very easily. And the nicest thing is just be open to new ideas, get ready to take feedback, correct? And keep things as light as you can so you can make the changes as necessary. And have fun. <laughs> <laughs>